So into our previous video, we have discussed about the different type of storages generally we have and how we can provide the protections to this particular data into different stages. Now here we are going to see how we can configure your storage security where we are going to provide a different securities over here where we are going to define an encryption to our databases. We are going to define a keys to access our databases. So let us see how we are going to use this on our portal. So for defining your storage security, we need to move into your storage first. So we will be moving into your storage account. Storage account. And uh, we'll check for which account do we require to define the, you know, uh, security. So this is the storage for training one, which is accessible by my all the virtual machines all the machines are stored over here and the data which we have into your virtual machines are again stored into this storage as well as um, i have also provided access to my some external users for using this particular storage now so what kind of service we generally have that we know into your storage we create a blob, blob services we generally have our file storages we also create our tables as well as queues right now here I want to secure my storage. So there are two different ways how you can secure your storage that is through access keys. You can define the access keys to your storages. So it is showing you the account name is storage for training one. This will be the account name and this will be the keys. You can create this keys and you can copy this keys and provide it to your user. Or if you are creating an application, so generally you will provide a storage where your user data will be stored. So into your application, you need to uh, define the storage name and this key so that you provide the access to the user to access it. Now, uh, for example, uh, here you can see we have two different keys. So by default, we create a primary and secondary key so that like if you are maintaining your storage or you know, you want to configure something else into your storages and you are defining something and your first key you want to repair so you can use your first key which will be a primary key and the secondary key will be accessible so always ensure that you are keeping two keys and while creating an application you copy with both keys to access your storage so that one is not well so other will be providing access to your clients and your customers or the end users who are accessing your application and this particular storage and the other thing we have that is a shared access signature so you can use this shared access signature called as SAS and uh, where you can define what you want to allow to a particular user like for example here we have allowed everything as of now if I want to allow only single resource type that is service container I don't want to define any objects here so we can just uncheck that we just want to define the blob storage we can just uncheck this once you have done with it um, you can also define the uh, start and expiry date for this particular access so uh, we can define uh, user to define the permission or to get access to my storage for one hour two hour or one day or one month so you can need to define the uh, start and uh, end timing as well as date over here and also you need to define if you are defining a timing which time zone you are using so it might happen like you know you are sitting in India and your users are located somewhere else into your Canada so obviously the time zone will be completely different so what will happen your Azure should not get confused on which time zone you are talking about either your Canada or you know, Indian zones so define the UTC time so for example I'm going to define um, Indian timings this is the Indian time okay and uh, what the allowed IP address you want to define so if you want to define the IP address like which is between your 192.168.0.0 into this particular range all the IP address I want to allow so we can allow in such a way and allow protocols is HTTPS only or both HTTP and HTTPS so nowadays you might be you know knowing about like all the websites are changed to HTTPS so I'm just allowing the HTTPS and signing key I require one which we have over here or we are going to allocate it on sign in key 2 so we can define as per that now here it is showing you allowed IP address okay okay so we don't have to define any CIDR here just done you can generate the SAS 
it is shared access signature once you have done this is a token of getting access to SAS and you can see the SAS is only generated for your blob service because we have authenticated only blob service over here so this you can share with your user with your client so that they will be able to get access to the uh, you know, limited access for what generally you have and how pretty particular time for you are going to define so once you select everything you can get the URL but uh, you won't be finding the URL for every one of it because I have not generated it yet so if you generate it again you will find this as for every uh, storage a uh, different kind of storage generally you have and you can share this token with your user to get access to this particular storage by using your blob service file service or whatever you require so this is mainly we generally define into your applications when we use our or we, we want to allow our users to get access to our storage and which kind of storage so this is what exactly we have seen how we can secure our storage by defining the keys and by defining the shared access signatures for our users same way we can also define the firewalls and virtual networks which we know how we can use it we can create our all the networks to be allowed or we can also define the selected networks to use this particular storage so if you have any existing virtual network you can select your existing virtual network here so i have only one rise of now rgvnet1 so this will be the only you know virtual network which will be allowed to access it and uh, into all subnets I require so that they will be allowed to access this particular storage so this way we can allow a certain networks only to select to your storage or to get access to your storage so this what we have seen about uh, adding networks to your storages as well as you can see the exceptions allow trusted Microsoft services to use this particular application or this particular storage you can also provide allow read access to the storage log logins which we have or we also can provide the read access to the storage metrics so whichever you're going to create ensure uh, so it is getting created so whichever you're going to create whichever the firewall you want to create you can add this uh, network exceptions as well so I just don't want to define any exceptions I want to define it for everyone to be used into this particular selected networks and I'm going to save it out so once you have saved it the firewall rule is created so that only this particular uh, you know systems or the virtual machines who are connected to this particular virtual network will only be able to access this particular storage okay so this is what we have done over here we have seen about the um, uh, security which we can define also we can define the encryption for our storage uh, so that uh, our data which we have here we are writing over here should be encrypted and into your existing file so by default it is enabled same thing we can also check the metrics who are using it how many total requests we are getting for using this particular users same way we have can create an alert rules for it like if suppose any user who are accessing our storage more than 100 GB of space for example so should we should get an error, error we can define here so I'm going to create a resource rule here there's an alert rule so again if you are a paid member or if you have subscribed for your Azure application again you need to pay this for each alert you generally create so ensure that whenever you are creating any alerts you always um, create a limited number of alerts by you know planning what exactly you want to deploy here and for what you want to create any alerts 